So you want to become a physicist, should you? And if you do, what can you expect? A lot of young people have asked for my advice about whether they should pursue a career in physics, and if so, in which field, seeing how critical I've been about much of what's going on. The issue is, I don't like giving career advice to people I don't know, because really I think career decisions are very personal. But then I thought there are some general things that I can say, so here we go. First of all, what even is physics? When people think about physics, they often think about the foundations of physics, stuff like dark matter, quantum gravity, bigger particle colliders, and so on, because that's what's in the headlines the most. But actually, most physicists work on much more, shall we say, grounded stuff. The biggest research area in physics is probably condensed matter physics, which you rarely hear about. That's everything from superconductors to semiconductors to liquid crystals. It's close to material science. Then there's fluid dynamics, statistical mechanics, plasmas, optics and quantum optics, atomic and nuclear physics, and so on. And what do you do in these areas? I think it can be summarized as analyzing, modeling, understanding, and also creating both theories and devices. I'd say that physics generally sits between engineering and maths. Second, it's worth saying that being a physicist is in many regards a job like any other. You learn how to do it, then you do it. It's not like you wake up one day and know what dark matter is and then you win a Nobel Prize. It's not how it works. There are a lot of techniques and methodologies that you need to learn. There's a lot of background knowledge and a lot of it is learning by doing, both in experiment and in theory development. Doing a PhD in physics takes something like 8 to 10 years, depending on country and field. Yes, maybe if you're a genius, you can do it a little faster, but for most people, that's what you're looking at, eight years or so. That's a significant part of your life, and a lot of people drop out in the first couple of years. Of course, you don't necessarily need to get a PhD. Depending on your aims, a bachelor's or master's degree might be sufficient. What's a PhD even good for? A PhD title demonstrates that you've learned to do your own research, in principle. In practice, it means you've learned to read papers you don't understand, write papers no one reads, and answer reviewer comments that make no sense, while forgetting what sunlight feels like. In any case, my point is, if you don't want to go into physics research, you might not need a PhD. PhD, though it usually helps with the starting salary. Third, what skills do you need to become a physicist? You need to be good at maths. There's no way around it. Physics is a lot of maths and increasingly also coding. Another skill you desperately need is how to draw all these Greek letters, because if your sigma looks like a six, that's going to be trouble. Besides that, I'd say the most relevant factor you need is motivation. Your research needs to matter to you. That's because unless you're the one mega brain in a million, it's going to be hard. And you'll need a lot of motivation to get through this. You need the kind of motivation that can survive buggy code, three rejected papers, and a supervisor who communicates exclusively in cryptic size, because yes, these things happen. Fourth, what are the job prospects? Statistically, about half of physics PhDs leave academia directly after their PhD, and in the years afterwards that fraction increases somewhat. This is data from the United States, but I think in Europe it's very similar. The unemployment rate among physicists is generally low, somewhat below population average. Again, that's similar in North America and Europe. Among the physicists who stay in academia, the fraction of those who land permanent positions has been decreasing for decades. This is isn't specific to physics, but still it's something you need to know. The job prospects in academia are currently miserable. Because of this, pretty much everyone who pursues a career in academia moves countries, usually multiple times after their PhD. It's stressful, unfriendly to private life, and detrimental to mental health. 
Again, you need to have a good motivation to get through this. I know a lot of physicists who left academia for more secure and better paid positions in the private sector because they wanted to start a family or just keep their sanity. In my case, my husband, who also has a PhD in physics, had the good sense of getting a permanent position in the private sector directly after finishing his thesis. So he's been our safety backup on the occasions that I ran out of risk research funding. Though I have to say that in hindsight, despite all my worrying and complaining, somehow I've always managed to muddle through. So then just what do physicists do? Like for real? Jobs in academia have some diversity, but they're generally a mix of research and teaching. It's rare these days to find positions without teaching duties, and you're most likely to find them at private institutes. Academic positions almost always come with other duties, management and administration, mentoring, grant writing and reviewing, organizing workshops, sleeping through faculty meetings, tracking down the person who borrowed the whiteboard marker, you get the picture. If you leave academia, there are many paths to go. I know a lot of physicists who went into banking investment insurances. This is a very well-trodden path, and if you open a book on finance maths, you'll probably understand why. It's not a big step to make, and yes, I've seriously thought about it. Another well-trodden path is government advisory or patent offices. Yes, that's still a thing. Then there's teaching and scientific publishing or other work that scientific publishers do, like interactive access to data or similar. Then there's corporate research, and some have their own startups. Currently, there are a lot of physicists going into renewable energies or quantum tech. There's public relations and science communication. I know a physicist who now works for the weather service, and another one who got into pandemic modeling before that was in vogue. There is even some data for a while, CERN tracked what happened to particle physicists who work there, and from those who left academia, most ended up as software engineers, followed by analyst, manager, and consultant. So I think this gives you a general sense of what a PhD in physics gets you. It's generally, I'd say, a very versatile education that's good for many things. I've no regrets doing a PhD in physics, though I have regrets about some of the research topics I choose afterwards. But that's another story. Let me know if this is interesting at all, and maybe I'll do another video about good and bad research topics. In summary, studying physics can be tough, but it's an education that's good for many things, and I think that by and large it's worth the pain. Of course, going to university isn't the only way to learn physics. If you're looking for a less formal and considerably more flexible way, I suggest you start with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science, and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra, or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. I've learned a lot on Brilliant, and I find their courses really well done. If you want to give it a try, use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. That way, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days, and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and give it a try. I'm sure you won't regret it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.